Myself Latika Savan from Department of Biotechnology. Today I will explain you about multiple alleles and blood groups which are present in humans. So before actually starting with multiple alleles, we will study some basic concepts related to alleles. So what are alleles? Basically these are the different forms of genes. So if you look over here, these are the different chromosomes and on there the different alleles are located A as well as B. So here if we are going to compare between the two alleles which are either homozygous or heterozygous. So first concept was uh, alleles. Next there are two more concepts which are genotype and phenotype. What is genotype? It is basically the genetic constitution of an organism and phenotype is produced because of the interaction of environment with the genotype. So always the phenotype is produced because of interaction with the genotype and the environment. There are two more concepts, what is homozygous and what is heterozygous? What is meaning of homo? So homo means the similar form of alleles. So here we can see the two conditions where the two chromosomes are looking similar. Either it is homozygous dominant condition or it is heterozygous dominant condition. So in case of heterozygous, the two alleles are completely different. So it is capital B small b or it is small b small b. Everyone knows that in case of homozygous or in case of heterozygous, one of the source comes from maternal and one of the source comes from paternal chromosome. Now, what is a locus? It is a specific place on the chromosome where a respective gene or allele is located. So we need to find out locus first and then we can target our gene of interest and we can find how it is getting expressed. Now actually our multiple alleles topic, in case of humans, we are having different kinds of blood groups. So maybe a person is having blood group A, it may have a blood group B, AB or O. So we are going to study examples of ABO blood group system which is coming under multiple alleles. There is one more concept which is called as co-dominant that I will tell you subsequently. So in case of multiple alleles, in a single individual, for example, my blood group is A. So within my individual, within my body, there are two different types of genes which are located. Either it is going to code for AIAIA or it is having a genotype IAI. How? That I will tell you. So in case of multiple alleles, there are there is a single one allele and it is going to produce its desired expression. For example, if there are two alleles, there are possible, how many genotypes are possible? If there is a single allele, how many genotypes are possible? That we will learn with the help of table. So before applying the table, there is a general formula which is called as n in bracket n plus 1 divided by 2. If you want to apply this formula, you should know how many alleles are there. For example, there is a first number 1 allele. How many genotypes are possible? Only 1. How many homozygous? Only one and obviously there will be no heterozygous individual. In case of third, for example, there are three alleles. Possible genotypes which are possible are six out of six. Three are homozygous and three are heterozygous. I will explain you how the two alleles, if it is present, how many genotypes are possible. They are three. Out of these three, two are homozygous and two are heterozygous. In case of homozygous genotype is capital A, capital A or it is capital A, a small a, small. The heterozygous capital A, small. In case of multiple alleles, if there are three alleles concerned, total number of genotypes which are possible are six. Out of this six, homozygous possibilities are three and heterozygous possibilities are again three. This is important as it is an example of multiple alleles. We are going to study at a time three different alleles which is IA, IB and small i which is controlling a different possible genotypes in humans. This is a scientist who is called as Card Landsteiner who has discovered ABO blood group system in humans and he has received a Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1930. So his discovery is a land breaking discovery for dis uh, maintenance of blood groups in humans. So total there are four blood groups in humans. First is A, B, AB and O. What is universal donor? What is universal recipient? Why transfusion experiment is very important? Because whenever we are donating blood to someone, whenever we are accepting blood from someone, you should know what is its blood group, whether it is compatible or not, that has to be decided. 
so before knowing this you should know what is blood so what is blood it is basically a fluid connective tissue which is present in our body it is composed of blood cells as well as a water portion which is called as plasma so rbcs wbcs and platelets its proportion is also mentioned for example in case of water portion approximately 55% is the water portion plasma and in case of cells it is having a blood rbcs wbcs as well as platelets so if you centrifuge a whole blood you can separate a blood cells as well as plasma why i am telling you this because we should know what are the different antigens which are present on rbc membrane and what are the different antibodies which are present in a serum so you should know what is the difference between plasma as well as in c so if plasma is having the anticoagulating agent you will get a plasma if it is not having a anticoagulating agent what is excuded excuding from the blood is your serum and antibodies are always present in either a serum or in plasma so basically our interest is to know what all antigens are present on rbc membrane and what antibodies are present in a plasma once you know this you can decide who is the person who will receive a blood from whom so if for example a person is having blood group a the antigens which are present on rbc membrane are a antibodies which are present are against antigen b if these are compatible a and b what will happen it will coagulate it will form a clot and that person will die so always the proportion which is mentioned is blood group a it will have antigen a on rbc membrane and antibody which is against b if you consider a blood group b the person is having antigen b on rbc membrane antibodies which are present are against antigen a the person who is having blood group ab is having both antigen a as well as antigen b no antibodies against antigen a as well as b in plasma and person o who is a universal donor will not have antigens a as well as b it will have both antibody against a as well as against b in a plasma so in case of this if we want to know how this antigens are produced on rbc membrane you should know some biochemistry behind it some molecular biology also so in this case abo blood group gene encodes a glycosyl acyl transferase enzyme which is going to add a specific sugar molecule to a compound which is going to be antigen a or antigen b which we are calling it as a specific determinants so in case of this if you see a diagram this is a h antigen for example this is h antigen if the individual is having ia allele it the final product will be on rbc membrane what is there is a antigen a if it is ib allele is present in an individual what is there on rbc membrane is antigen b so it will be decided whether the particular individual is having anti ia allele expressed or ib allele expressed accordingly it will be decided which antigens are present on rbc membrane and which antibodies are there within a serum so basic antigen which is common is h antigen which is there in all the individuals so if your person is a b ab or o h antigen is common but the production of antigen a antigen b depends upon which allele is getting expressed within that individual so this is a diagram which will explain you that if here whatever structures which are there glucose galactose n acetyl glucosamine as well as galact uh, galactose sugar it is common for all the rbc membrane so this membrane is common but which sugar will get added and it will decide whether it will be antigen a or whether it will be antigen b so in case of antigen and uh, h antigen Uh, whether it is combining with ia or whether it is combining with ib will decide whether that rbc membrane is coated with antigen a or whether it is coated with antigen b why it is important because you should know which blood can be given to whom or to whom individual so here are the specific diagrams for example this is a type a type b type ab and type o the person who is having blood group o is not having any antigens on the membrane next if we want to see the blood group antigens h is common and which antigens are there that will tell the compatibility 
if you want to perform the experiment in a lab and decide which antigens are present on a rbc membrane and what is the blood group of that individual you should know this table which antigens which antibodies and accordingly finally what is the blood group of that individual so these are the four diagrams which i am going to show you subsequently the first slide is a b d so if there is a agglutination you are able to see the clumping reaction and the antigen antibody has reacted with each other if there is no clumping that means the antigen and antibodies are not reacted with each other the antigen is completely absent so actually if you want to perform you need to take the antiseras you will add into a, a slide which is cavity slide having three slides having three cavities add the blood add the antibodies and check where the whether the agglutination has occurred or not so it is a result of b positive blood group if your blood group is ab positive these are the expected results so i think you have understood now why blood group is important what are the different alleles which are contributing for the development of blood groups who is universal donor and who is the universal recipient thank you so much